we're living in a time in which we're experiencing a sea change on the issue of marriage. I would say that marriage, as it's been understood historically, is essentially being erased in the West. The church does not have any kind of an adequate response. They've, they've broken down in their ability to do marriage well, to help people form lasting marriages, to understand what marriage is. Uh, communities like Catholics and Protestants don't even know how to talk to each other about this. They oftentimes don't even realize that they're already at 98% agreement on a lot of this stuff. So there's such a huge gap and we're essentially being defeated in the culture wars on these issues while, while we're also de being defeated at home in our own churches in terms of the kind of lives that people are living in their families and in their own marriage lives. And so if anything, I, I wish that we could have done something like this sooner uh, because I think the need is very acute for this information to be out there at this time. Some of the key themes that I would expect them to read when they read this book is first of all that marriage is a creational ordinance. It exists independent of, of what we think or want. It was placed in, in, in creation at the very beginning. It was designed, humans were designed for it and this goes back before the fall. Uh, just like it says in the old classic Anglican wedding ceremony that is so beautiful, this is God's holy ordinance. It, it's at the beginning of the Bible, it's at the end of the Old Testament, it's at the beginning of the New Testament, Jesus' first miracle was performed at a wedding, and the Bible ends with the marriage of Christ and the church. And so in that sense, we, we need to understand that it's, it's reflected in the Trinity, it's reflected in the relationship between Christ and the church, it's a covenant that we enter into. We don't, we don't make it up whole hog. And, and that it, it, it places expectations and demands on us. The void that was in the market that I felt that this book addressed, and it's a pretty significant one, um, is very few marriage books start where God starts. They don't start with what is marriage and why does it exist? What, what was God's ultimate purpose for marriage? The, the typical marriage book that's on the market, it, particularly in the Christian world, Sometimes it's true, but oftentimes the social science in it is not sound. Oftentimes it's borrowed data, it's incorrectly interpreted. Um, I have a very solid long-term grasp of a lot of the essential data in this field and I try to present it honestly and realistically. My object from the beginning was I wanted grounded in rich social science, rich history, rich doctrinal understanding, an ecumenical and honest understanding of different Christian viewpoints on this issue and a biblical understanding and to basically have all those harmoniously brought together and laid out systematically. At this point I've been teaching this material for well over 35 years. I've taught this, this kind of material to people in three different cities, every age group, every ethnic group, Sunday school, college, so in terms of the ability, my mastery of the data, the information, um, but also my ability to, to reach people across a wide spectrum about it. My own maturity and experience that I'm bringing to, to the table to talk about these things, it's just a perfect timing in my life to be able to do this in a way that I could have never done 20 years ago.